Welcome back to the Drunk on Riding Video Club. And now the third month of the Isolation Specials, and today we are talking about Six Underground. Fun Ryan Reynolds romp, uh, directed yeah. by Michael Bay. This was, Kim, this was your pick. Can it you, was. Um, can, you, can you tell us why you picked this one? Well, I generally, speaking, like Ryan Reynolds movies, and I saw this one... Um, on things you might be interested in, on my Netflix <laughs> profile, um, it looked like it would be something different that he did, because um, I've seen a lot of his rom-coms and, of course, Deadpool. Um, and that's really it. I mean, that, those are those are some good some good reasons. Um, Before. Before we really get into our thoughts about it, I'd like to to bring in our reader responses to the movie because I think that's going to kind of set the tone what, for no the episode. Joke? I'll get there. Oh, I I'm switching it up a little bit. Okay. I have it in a different order. Uh huh. Okay. So this is a comment. These are commentaries. I will call them out. So from Kwong, who says, "I personally did not enjoy the movie." The plot was really far-fetched, and the pacing of it was just all go, go, go. There was a lot of action, but it seemed gratuitous with dialogue that didn't make sense or add to the story in any meaningful way. My wife checked out within 20 minutes because it didn't make sense to her and eventually fell asleep around... And I eventually fell asleep around, like, two-thirds of the movie. I didn't finish it because it really didn't draw me in at all to the characters or the mission they were trying to accomplish. The way they cut the scenes sometimes seemed abrupt, like they were trying to shove too much into a specific runtime, but it just ended up being really muddled for me. Justin says, Michael Bay does it again. Whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, you should know what you're getting what you're getting heading into this movie. Ryan Reynolds is Ryan Reynolds, and I don't remember anyone else who was in the movie uh, three months after watching it except Dave Franco. You'll see why that's disappointing pretty quickly. That brings us to our joke of the day. Dave Franco who was number six, yeah. very short-lived, got a forklift through the neck area, inspires this joke. Why is six afraid of seven? Because he's a registered six offender. He's a registered six offender. Nice. I thought you were going to say seven, eight, nine. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. The, that's the typical <laughs> one, yes, because seven, eight, nine, yeah. But I saw this one, I was like, oh, that's a, that's a little different. Uh, we'll continue on. See, I was getting to the joke. Yeah. Amanda, it was eh, boring, didn't keep my attention. Mm -hmm. And finally, Arya, overall, a visually stunning and action-packed movie with just enough story to keep the audience hooked. The story pacing feels clunky at parts, the smash cuts with people's backstories, the death in the beginning, sorry Dave Franco, and how much exposition there actually is. But it's cohesive enough to make for a great movie. Well cast, amazingly shot, and character and dialogue well written to make the characters believable. I don't agree with Arya's review. Um, because I, it was very much a Michael Bay movie, and Ryan Reynolds was Ryan Reynolds, and you kind of know what to expect in both of those things. I mean, Ryan Reynolds was basically his Deadpool character, cracking wise, being great. I, I, I liked him. I think that the movie was not well written, was not well edited. The, the, some of the cuts were just sporadic, made no sense storyline wise. It looked like they made one shot and did not have time for a retake. So they would just splice into the, it, it looked like a YouTube video. Yeah. Like they were just, somebody would say something and then they would continue saying that same thing, but there would be like a, a, a cut, yeah. like, like it was a secondary shot or like it was a, a cut in time. And there were other parts in the movie where like, yeah. Uh, who was it that mentioned the flashbacks? Didn't really seem to make sense. There was a whole lot of buildup. Didn't really explain why any of them were doing this mission. Other than, oh, he's a bad guy. And he was like the first of like seven or eight bad guys that they had listed up on the wall. Never showed any of that. Never showed anything, really. They were just like, we're going to go kill this guy. Never gave us a reason why why this guy specifically. Yes, he's a bad guy. And Ryan Reynolds had his little run-in with the toxic gas. That was a powerful scene. But, yeah, yeah I don't know. So I didn't... We watched this in a two-day mm -hmm. span. Um, yeah, we had about a uh, half hour left. Right. The first day, which is where we watched a chunk of the movie, mm -hmm. I didn't like it at all. No? Didn't like it at all. 
I wanted something different from Ryan Reynolds. And that's kind of what I was expecting a little bit. To not the wisecracking, usual Deadpool. Yeah, he was Deadpool in this movie mm-hmm. without the costume. Mm-hmm. Um, a billionaire Deadpool. Yeah, okay. Who was a ghost. But very reminiscent but, of Call of Duty ghosts if you've I want I that. just wanted I wanted something different. I wanted to see Ryan Reynolds do something a little more action packed and serious. Mm. Um they did not explain like you said any of the backstories. I think the movie could have been a lot better had they done that. Either Give us all of it, like give us like the why, yeah. give us the where, give us give us actual motivations, or give us none of it. Like yeah. I, I think it would have been interesting if they made the decision of, hey, you don't know who these people are, you don't know their motivations, but they're they're gonna come through and they're gonna they're gonna like yeah. mess all this up. But like even even seven, so we get we get to kind of see him before he joins the team, and even that like. It seemed very kind of ham-fisted. Like we we see him try to save his um his teammates. They got they all got blown up, and then he fakes his death and he watches his like I think it was his, his brother funeral. or no, it was his funeral. Yeah, it was his funeral. But who was the guy that was like screaming? His brother. Yeah. The humor in this movie really weird. Like there were some moments that I kind of I laughed. I found it yeah. kind of funny. There was just it was so over the top. The the humor. The violence, the, the violence smash was cuts, over the, top. The, the where the guy's head exploded with the with the grenade yeah. at the end. Wow. I um I did read so the budget for this movie was 150 million. Really? Yeah, it was Michael Bay for you at the time Netflix's most expensive wow movie. Um, this came out last year, 2019? Yeah, 2019. However, that has been surpassed by The Irishman. Which we still haven't watched. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it just, it didn't, it it mm. didn't live up to what I wanted it to be. And the, the ending to, you know, we, we just finished it. Um, that kept my attention. The ending was really cool. The, the use of the magnets, everybody yeah. flying back and forth, like all the visual gags that that kind of led with, with the, the yeah. guy reaching for the grenade, then getting blown up, the knives sticking to the wall and then them switching over to the other side and you're like oh the knives are going to come and then they do and it's like they're like pin cushions like so many great visual gags there i didn't like that the plot hinged on ryan reynolds breaking his phone like that was just really yeah you can't find a better way to pause the action and that same the same scene you know number four he's He's the parkour expert. And I loved his scenes generally, especially earlier on in the movie. I thought he was great. His, um, the pool scene. Uh, yeah. I, I I thought he was fantastic in when the, the, they shot that and had him breathing under there. All of his, like the way that they saved him, the way he was escaping. I loved all that. What was he doing on the boat at the end? Like he was just, he I, seemed to just be running around well, and then he, it was suddenly nighttime. Well, he put something underneath the boat. Yeah, right? he did that. that. The, he, he like said, he like set did something with the anchor. Yeah. But then... It didn't show him doing anything else until he was caught, at which time he's telling everybody that he's going to get killed. And Ryan Reynolds is like, where are you? Yeah. And the guy's just not answering. He's like, he's going to kill me. Ryan Reynolds is like, where? give me something. He couldn't say, I'm by the pool. He was right next to like the pool. They, they tried really hard, I feel like, to develop Ryan Reynolds' character. Yeah, they, they had. he had you a know, little bit of a character arc where... Like, Oh, he yeah. cares about him. Yeah. So he's gonna go back and it's save him. It's his family him. now. And then that. And I'm like, and then that was it. And then who? Who was the woman? The doctor? She was like number four, I think. No, she, four was the guy. Four. So who, five, I guess. Number yeah. four, so five. I don't the know. Doctor, I don't, like, I don't like, like the numbers. She like smiled when he went to go find number four, and I was like, oh, that's a touching moment. And then the ending, the like epilogue. Well, I thought what was happening in the epilogue? I had no idea. Was that his kid? Was that was that the woman from yes, the opera? I, th- I think that was his kid. I don't know who the woman was. I think I think, I think because, that was the woman from the opera. I don't see, think that was his thing. kid. But it, like it doesn't make sense. The beginning was so boring. I don't know. I don't know who that woman mm. was because I didn't. I I don't care to pay attention. And I and I feel like Ryan Reynolds was a bit wasted because he didn't have someone to go off of. Like uh, 
in Deadpool, it really works because he has the, this cast of characters that are very easily very developed and they can, they can quit back at him and they can go back and forth. Him in usually like anything, like uh, you, you brought up his, his rom-coms. What's that movie with Sandra Bullock? The Proposal. The Proposal. Great movie. Betty White and him great Sandra Bullock and him great like she's the heart the hard ass he he's there cracking jokes like, they work really well here he's just like cracking these jokes and like the timing's not right on here it just seemed yeah like not fitting talk about not fitting also the music the whole soundtrack I don't know who picked out the songs in this movie I like they did a couple not, of them they, okay they're fine songs they do not fit the movie at yeah. all there was I actually made so, a note so of this. Hold, hold, hold on. I actually made a note of this because in the revolution scene, which was also ridiculous, they're like, we, let's start a revolution. They all have a revolution all of a sudden. They don't work that way. But they, they so for this video, uh, they, they had a song playing and, and it kept playing and it just kept going. But Ryan Reynolds actually says, who picked this yeah. about the music? And I'm like, yeah, who did pick it? Why what, were these songs in there? It seemed like like Imagine Dragons or or Muse was was overused. The the music just was not good. It was not did not like. All right, so Warren hated the movie. Go, go. I enjoyed it. I thought it was you know it's a very much a Michael Bay movie, and I I have mixed feelings about Michael Bay. Well, so I don't really like the Transformers movies, but I love Bad Boys. But Bad Boys is what it is because of of Will Smith and what's his name Lawrence what's his first name no. what's his first ah oh, why, I've why never am I blanking on him oh, but the the two of so, them bounce off of each other and and it's almost feels like improv and it's fantastic we don't get any of that here so i've not seen transformers i've not seen yeah uh bad, bad boys. boys so you have mm mm-hmm. mhm how does this compare to his other movies? Is this a plot it's a, it's for him? A, no, it's a, it's about on par. It's a, pretty much what you would expect for a Michael Bay movie. I think Bad Boys is way leaps and bounds ahead of this. Transformers, I think the first one is is okay. It's pretty. It's it's entertaining. It's in, it's enjoyable in a, in a way. But they made a ton of money. Like all of his movies make well, a ton of money. I don't know if this actually made so this, Netflix any any money though i i don't know i i i didn't I mean, see that netflix is weird with their their numbers anyway yeah but uh you know i did read that this was a lot of people what they thought was netflix's attempt at a blockbuster mm-hmm. i don't and think it just, i don't think it paid off no i think like rotten tomatoes gave it like a four or something out of ten yeah like that's hard that's harsh that's harsh yeah i mean i think I think, I think everybody I think it, who watched yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think there was a good movie in there. I think the script needed some severe tightening. Like the, I liked the, the action scenes. I thought they were pretty fun. The driving through, what what was the Florence at the beginning? I thought that was really cool. I, there were some really fun action sets. Yeah. It's just the story around it was nonsense, and and also kind of bothersome because it. I just kept watching this and I was like, seemed very reflective of what's happening today. Like, the way that he's treating his people and the, yeah. then, like, it just, it, it's like, I have ha- I was having flashbacks to just watching the news. Well, it was not the best movie. Mm. I don't have much more to say about it. Mm. Because I just didn't like it. So I want to do a, a new thing. I haven't, I didn't tell you about this, so I'm going to just throw this at you. So, right before we started recording, we were looking at the list of all the movies. Yeah. We're, 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 we were looking at the, the listing of the movies. Right. So, we're... This, is, this episode will be episode 12. So okay. We've been doing this for a year. Okay. So, I thought it'd be fun if we ranked the past year's worth of movies. That we, oh, my goodness. We, that You're going to make just against each other. I, I, no, I got, I got them all here. Okay. And we're, we're just going to... I'm going to say... Uh, so we have, we're just going to go through it quickly and I'll compile it later and, and put the, the whole list thing. I'm not going to do it off so of memory here. Like so one, two, three or no, just which one is better. So we have Citizen Kane. Yeah. And the imitation game. I would put 
Citizen Kane above Imitation Game. Imitation Game over Citizen Kane. Okay. Then we had The Wandering Earth, which I would put under both of those, I think. Even though it was very enjoyable, I think those two were better movies. Both, on yes. Okay. I, I agree with that. Then, oh, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. I would put that above Citizen Kane for me. I kind of like that movie. Really? It was fascinating. It was fascinating. I don't remember. Did I like that movie? I don't know. I don't. It, it didn't really stick with me. So I'm gonna, I'm going to put that underneath the Wandering Earth. Okay. So I'm I'm going to put that at the bottom because I remember Wandering Earth. I don't really remember this movie. Really? With nah. with nah. That Zach Efron. Yeah, I know. Being... I know what it is. I was looking at the poster just now. Okay. Then we had a Quiet Place. I really liked a Quiet I Place. I did like that. Yeah, I would put that. So I have right now. I have Citizen Kane at number one. Followed by the imitation game. I would put A Quiet Place under Citizen Kane above the imitation game. Um, you don't have to remember your order. Just What movie am I talking about right now? <laughs> <laughs> A Quiet Place. I would put that under imitation game. Okay. Okay, then Sherlock Holmes. I really like Sherlock Holmes. That was kind of, it was. I would put that under Imitation Game. Sherlock Holmes? You would yeah. put, okay, above, uh, above, above that last one. Above A Quiet Place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I would put that um, above A Wandering Earth. Yeah. Above Wandering Earth. Okay, then we had, this is fun, because I, I don't know what the list is going to actually look like until I, I will rewatch this later and edit it and, and put it in. So then we have It's a Wonderful Life. I'm going to put that right at the bottom. I didn't, I did Especially not. Especially since during the recording, you kept calling it the wrong name. <laughs> That's true. I did. I'm going to put that right at the bottom. Um, I, I've totally lost track of my. my... Well, <laughs> would you put that on higher? Higher. So yeah. would you put that above imitation game? Would you put that I mean, that's above a Sherlock? That's what, would you put that's that a, above Sherlock Holmes? I don't know. I feel like I can't rank that. That is my a childhood. So would you put that movie? Would you put that me. like number one? No, I wouldn't put it at number one. But I don't know, right there in the middle somewhere. Okay. Okay. Um, what was next? Then we had uh, Doctor Zhivago, which neither of us watched. So I'm just gonna no, put that at bottom. the bottom. Yeah. And do, do, Wait, do. no, no, no! I watched it. You you did watch it. I watched it during maternity leave. No, I never I, I never watched it. I watched it and I text them and I'm like, um, we watched this movie out of order. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Then The Witcher. I'm gonna put Witcher at number one. For me. I'm gonna put that ahead of Citizen Kane. I really like I really enjoyed The Witcher. It made me yeah. wanna play the game. It made me want to read the book. Like that that one really captured me. Alright, well, um I know you you didn't have the same opinion, but that's I, I enjoyed it. It took me a lot to get into it, so... Down toward the bottom? Yeah, I, yeah. 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 Uh, above the Wandering Earth or below the Wandering Earth? Oh my god, Wandering Earth can be like the last. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Driving Miss Daisy. I did not I, I did not like Driving Miss Daisy. I, I'm going to put that right down near the bottom. Uh, Above or... I'm going to put that... I'm going to put... I'm going to put it above It's a Wonderful Life. Mine's right around oh, It's a Wonderful Life, too. Okay. Then we had Mute. I personally really liked Mute. I can't say that it's above Witcher or Citizen Kane. I would, I would put, say that's I under would, Witcher for me. Under Witcher for you. I would put that... Mute? I'd probably put that, uh, like, number three, number four-ish. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere in there. Okay. And then finally, so, and then finally we have this, this lovely gem... Of a movie that we just watched. So for me, I'm going. I'm definitely going to put it above. It's a Wonderful Life. I'm going to put it above the. What was that other movie that I said it was near the bottom? I don't know. How I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it underneath that. I'm going to. I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's like around number eight ish. For me, this one is probably um, above that Wandering Earth one. Hmm. Okay. All right, so that, that's that's our, our kind of ranking. Yeah. Uh, that was the first year of the video club. Yeah. That's kind of exciting. That I, I didn't even realize that we were a full year in. So next month we'll start we'll start volume two, I suppose. 
volume two. What's volume two? Well, just it's the second year, year oh, two. Okay. Year two, volume two. Well, I mean, I don't want to go through and say, let's rank all of the next 12 against the last yeah, 12. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. too much. But maybe we'll keep the tally going um, as we move forward and say, was this better than last month's movie? Yeah. But we'll start off. We'll start off. We'll start off clean. Mm-hmm. The clean slate. Okay. So Which what's... gets me to the pick of the month. Oh, I can see it in his eyes. I'm very excited because it's gonna be something I hate. I found out. I've I've been sitting on this. I've been sitting on this <laughs> for about a month. Mm-hmm. I found out that you haven't seen. Oh no. A very classic film. You that fa- mm-hmm. that you need to see because I think you're gonna love it. Back- there's 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 reasons I haven't seen a lot of movies. Back to the Future. Oh okay, I'll do that. Uh huh. It's currently streaming on Netflix. Okay. If you don't if you don't have Netflix, it's Back to the Future. You probably have it. Go watch it. Michael J. Fox. Uh huh. Uh huh. Christopher Lloyd. Uh oh. It's I I am I am excited. I was watching this. Uh, where do you, you know, know uh, where do you know Michael J. Fox from? This? Where do I know Michael J. Fox from? Yeah. Yes. From from the Back to the Future series. Where do you know Michael J. Fox <laughs> from? He was Alex P. Keaton. What is that? <laughs> um I can't think of the the name of the Family Ties? Family Ties. Uh yeah. Yeah, no. Back to the Future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Back to the Future. And also also that political one. Yeah, with um, Charlie Sheen. Well, he, he Charlie Sheen came in later oh, and like replaced Heather, him. Heather Heather Locker. Yeah, she was in that too. So I that's, don't know the name of that either. That's our yeah, pick. I, I We're I'm excited. I don't know how you've never seen Back to the Future. I'm excited for that one. So that that is next month's pick is Back to the Future, and I think you know we're we're all kind of coming out of quarantine. I believe uh, it certainly seems like it last week. So I think this is going to be our last isolation special. We're going to go back to being a uh, patron exclusive. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who watched. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Enjoyed this. Hopefully it brought you a little bit of, of levity in the uh, crap couple of months that we had. And, uh, you know, we got to watch some some good movies, some not so good movies. But uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, feel free to continue to join us at uh, drunkonriding.com. Uh, it's to be part of the video club. It's just a dollar pledge. You just you. It's open. It's available to every patron. So uh, it's cheap to enter. It's just a fun thing that we do with the patrons. And a uh, dollar also gets you access, early access to every single video I post. So it's a pretty good deal, and it's fun, and it's just enjoyable. And we're gonna keep doing this. So hopefully, we'll see you there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, any last words on Six Underground? I have one last word. Okay. I've been talking a while. You go first. No, no, go ahead. The song mm-hmm. Six Underground was by not. Sneaker Pimps was not in the movie. Very upsetting. Maybe it was no. in the credits. I didn't stick you, around you for the credits. You mentioned that, that you wanted I thought it there. was at one point, like, the. I think it was the, the yeah, beat was I, there. I, I kind of got excited. But then it was not anywhere near that song. So I was very disappointed. Like, you have, you're taking the name of this classic song, and you're not putting it in the movie at all? Like, what a shame. Come on. It'd be like if Stand By Me didn't have the, the song Stand By Me in, in the in the movie. Yeah. Which, you know, this, so this is a bit of a plug for my Stephen King dissection series. The movie is set before Stand By Me, the song, was released. So Stand By Me, the song, is not actually in the film. It's it's in the credits. But the the like melody of the song plays throughout. It's it's part of the score of the film. But you don't you never actually hear the song in the movie because it wasn't out yet. And the only reason it was called Stand By Me is because they thought the body, which is the original Stephen King novella title, sounded like a romance movie. Or either a, a romance, romance a romance movie. or Another horror movie. Did they read the... the, the... No, no they, they were just talking... It was just... It was marketing people. Marketing people don't read. I'm in marketing. That's why it's funny. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, 
Thank you again. <laughs> uh, until next time, cheers. Keep on riding. I'm going to get you a catchphrase. No, I don't need a catchphrase.